Hello, and welcome to this week's Movie Math, where, holy chili dogs, that's a lot of gold rings. Thank goodness the Jim Carrey qualified his supposed plans to retire, keeping his options open. Does he go out on top with the biggest debut of his career and with everyone singing his praises for his stern yet still sympathetic response to the slap while on the press tour for this movie? I'm pretty sure he'll at least be making Sonic 3, which of course Paramount already greenlit before this movie already opened. Good idea! I don't know. I th do you think Jim Carrey should keep going? He's made some real crap, and I don't think he has the best judgment in terms of the projects he should do. But it would be pretty hard, I think, to walk away when you know, you're at the pinnacle of your career. Although, interestingly, Will Smith was at the pinnacle with Aladdin. And look how that turned out. You don't want to stay too long at the party. Uh, but yeah, very, very exciting for Jim Carrey's career. Uh, the Sonic sequel raced past the original movie's debut, bookending the pandemic with dollar signs. See Hollywood dry those tears. It's not so bad. Uh, in fact, Sonic 2 is the best opening for a family movie during the entire pandemic, a genre that actually turned out to be pretty darn pandemic proof. I think a lot of people, just a lot of families in particular, just couldn't stay in the house anymore. Uh, Sony blinked, of course, with some of their animated movies, or more accurately, streaming services offered them so much money they couldn't resist. And Disney Plus is obviously very worried about churn and is getting even more worried as the pandemic begins to taper off. We're seeing some really big moves for that streaming service. It'll be interesting to see how big those moves get. Dancing with the Stars going to Disney Plus. That's a pretty big move. Uh, you might be like, what? But yes, network TV is still really, really big. Uh, no one talks about it, really. Although I think Dancing with the Stars still, still trends. When they move The Bachelor to Disney Plus, although I don't know how they can, because people actually have sex on that show. And Disney Plus, um, although they just introduced those uh, parental controls, so let's move it on over. All right, so, so anyway, back to Sonic 2. Uh, this debut isn't just a win for Carrie and video game movies. You know, not, not counting for inflation, this is the biggest opening for a video game movie ever. That's incredible. That's amazing that it's Sonic. Sega's like, ha ha, bing, whatever that noise makes when they get a gold ring, right? I think I was pretty close. Uh, but Paramount also, this is huge for Paramount, giving them their fourth big movie of the year so far, and we're only starting with April, although they're pretty much played out. They went all in at the beginning of the year, which was smart, because this is their also their fourth number one debut. They might not have any home runs, but again, these are very solid plays. And to be fair, they do have a hopeful home run uh, for this upcoming Memorial Day weekend with their biggest star, even though he sues them, Mr. Tom Cruise. He doesn't want his movies going to, to Paramount+. Plus. Top Gun, Ma Top Gun Maverick, I didn't get a chance to react to that last trailer. I thought it was pretty slick. I think it, the movie could be big. We'll say though. Uh, that means we're going to have to sit through the original Top Gun, which I think is a little tough to do. But anyway, maybe we'll do it for a, a BTT uh, movie club night. Uh, it's better with friends. Uh, Sonic doesn't have a lot of run, uh, room to run, though. Speaking of the release schedule, there's a new Harry Potter installment just next week, although the Fantastic Beast, Beast movies, I think, do skew more adult. Do they to you? Is your family planning to go to see that movie? Um, it's a good movie. We'll talk about Fantastic Beasts more in just a moment. Uh, uh, and then, of course, Universal comes in hot after Illumination Sing 2. Huge hit everywhere it can be a hit. Uh, with their other animation powerhouse, One Two Punch over there, DreamWorks the Bad Guys. That could do very, very well, I think. That looks excellent. Sam Rockwell, he works as hard with his voiceover work as he does with his live action work. I respect that. However, the first Sonic made its 148.9 domestic total pretty much uh, in just five weeks. So talk about fast. Uh, it, you know, it was pretty much there. And of course, Sonic is a huge franchise play for Paramount overall. So the box office is just the engine for this, for this machine. They have Sonic 3, again, already confirmed, and that Knuckles spinoff for Paramount Plus, which just became a really hot show. Uh, critics might have felt the sequel wasn't as fast on its feet, but audiences loved it. I think a lot of critics don't play uh, Sonic, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. This really delivered for fans in particular based on what you guys told me. As for Sonic 2's demo numbers, it leaned male. I think it needs major female character. I mean, uh, um, Natasha Rothwell did a very nice job, and, t uh, job and, and Tika Sumter is always a lot of fun, but they were, very, they were afterthought characters. We need a female 
you know, a, what is a hedgehog and a bat, right? Those are our two options. Let's get them in there. Uh, but then also, this is fascinating. While usually Caucasians are the biggest demographic for movies, you see the numbers when we go over them uh, when we do almost every week, here are the Latino audiences who powered Sonic to number one. Will that be reflected in Sonic 3's cast, either the live action cast or the voice cast? I think, you know, Paramount should be smart and do that. Uh, although the Latino group is one of the hardest to, to nail down because, as you might recall, the horror genre, Latino, the Latino uh, demographic loves horror movies, yet every time Hollywood tries to make you know, uh, a horror movie for that demographic specifically, it's a disaster. So what is your advice for courting the Latino market? I mean, it's clearly Sonic's already doing it, but for Sonic 3. Uh, as for this weekend's other new release, forget explosions, Michael Bay imploded with Ambulance debuting just at number four with under 10 million. And while the film might have cost just 40 million, it's all those practical, life-threatening uh, stunts they did, Michael Bay. Uh, that's, that's very cheap for a Michael Bay film, though. He, he was able to bring it in very low. But it still didn't open big enough to likely turn a profit when you factor in the cost of advertising as well. It was a rough weekend for Jake Gyllenhaal overall, bombing on a particularly horrible episode of Saturday Night Live last night. And that's saying something, because Saturday Night Live these days is usually pretty bad. Uh, and proving that outside of Spider-Man, he's simply not a box office draw. In fact, he never has been. And he doesn't get a lot of awards nominations either. So what's he doing out there? What are you doing, Jake? Gyllenhaal, though, is an incredible actor. I'm sure many of you are typing that right now. He is, but nobody wants to see this guy. I think that man needs a streaming show. He's, he's, uh, I was surprised how little TV he's done. But that's great. That would be a big deal if he gets a streaming show. Andrew Garfield has one coming up. Everyone's getting a streaming show. He needs one. Uh, as for Michael Bay, well, after he publicly threw his VFX team under the bus for this movie, that was bad, and of course his horrible treatment of Megan Fox, well, maybe it's time for him to ride off into the sunset as a successful producer, which he is. He actually produces a lot of horror. Uh, I think he's actually a producer on the Quiet Place movies, right, I believe. Um, and he could come back. He needs a break. Uh, although Ambulance, which skewed older in male, by the way, suggesting Bay isn't winning over any new fans from his heyday, although he is retaining some, it got inexplicably an A-minus cinema score. Did you see Ambulance? Was it A-minus material? So maybe it'll find an audience in the ancillary market down the line. And everything, everywhere, all at once, finally went wide this weekend. You know, it's not super wide, but it qualifies as wide. Is it playing at a theater near you? I saw a hilarious tweet about someone saying, Spider-Man No Way Home is still playing near me after all these months, yet every, everything everywhere all at once is not. Uh, and it delivered a solid but not mind-blowing number six placement with about six million. But that's okay. If it did too well, that would hurt its awards chances down the line. I think we could have the new Birdman here. Isn't that exciting? That won four Oscars, including Best Picture. And Best Director, by the way, so the Daniels, might want to get ready for the awards campaign trail. Uh, I'm seeing it tomorrow, and I will review it this week. I think I'm going to do a half review, half spoiler review. That's why I'm, because, you know, I'm late to review it. Uh, this movie really snuck up on everyone, but it's a fantastic for A24. A24 is not the best um, awards campaigner, so that could be a small problem for this movie. All right, so anyway, as, I mean, they're, they're okay, but they're not like Fox. I think Birdman was a Fox Searchlight picture, right? Uh, they're, they're really good, like, Fox, well, now Disney, those people know what they're doing about getting awards. Uh, as for the rest of the top 10, speaking of awards, Jared Leto better hope that Apple TV's awards office, which is also excellent, can get him some noms for We Crashed, because otherwise, and he's excellent in that show. He's so good. I watched two more episodes last night. He's great there. Anne Hathaway's doing a great job. It's a really good show. But I thought he did a good, good job in Morbius. But I think Leto's a problem. I think Leto, his career, his career might be over. If I were a producer, I, I mean, I, I, Disney should get him off of Tron, quite frankly. I, it's not worth the risk for all the money they're supposed to spend on that. Morbius fell a whopping 74% in its second weekend, although still managed to play second. Uh, that movie's only hope, uh, Morbius's only hope, though, is the ancillary market, where again, people might stream it in secret, and then only, only Sony will know how much money is rolling in. Uh, so that could happen, right? I mean, I guess, I mean, you could see it. Who knows that you're going to the theater? I, don't, I mean, it's really bad. I mean, the movie was cheap. It was a cheap movie. 
but so far this is still really embarrassing. That drop is really bad. I think it's very bad, particularly for Jared Leto. I think, because the movie's not that bad. So you're like, why does everyone hate this so much? And I think it might be Jared Leto. Whew, that's rough. And The Lost City is holding okay. You know, it opened at number one, very strong. But at the rate that it's going right now, I don't think it's going to make it to the century mark, which at this point in the pandemic is a little embarrassing, especially for a movie that opened so strong at number one. Although I don't think Scream made it to 100 million either. That's right, Paramount's going for quantity instead. But the ancillary market, I think, will be big for all of Paramount's movies. They're going to, you know, Paramount Plus, and then they'll head to, head to other markets. Finally, the Batman still hanging in there like a bat. Uh, and it's 735 million globally. I think that's a win. I think, you know, I think we're going to count the pandemic and the, you know, the situation, uh, the horrible situation with the Ukraine, uh, with Ukraine and Russia. I think 735 is real good. Uh, again, where is the announcement for the Batman 2? But anyway, speaking of Warner Brothers, Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore. They've got a lot going on at Warner Brothers right now. They're like, we'll greenlight some movies later. Just hold on. we got to stop this discovery spinning first. We've got to nail all this down. And they are. They're in the process of doing that. The merger was uh, approved on Friday. It became official. Uh, they released... Um, it's so funny. They released the, uh, the they, they tweeted about their new logo and like every response was about the Snyder cut. And I understand you guys. And I understand that your campaign was successful before. So you want to keep going, but I think there, you got to be careful. I think there's a, there's a fine line. And at a certain point you might just, you mean, you're just killing their social media game. And I don't think that's going to make them like you very much. All right. So anyway, they're not going to be, I mean, I don't, it's bad is, you know, I would tone it down a little bit, guys. All right. So anyway, I mean, not to say that I just think it would behoove you. I'm just telling you. All right. You get more, more flies with honey than vinegar. And you guys right now are whoo, vinegary. All right. Meanwhile, Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore opened overseas in 22 markets and brought in 58 million ahead of its, you know, pretty much global debut this coming week. I think they did that, uh, opened in the UK, where, of course, Harry Potter is quite big. It's where it originated. It's like their family version of James Bond. Uh, and I think they hope word of mouth is going to help it. But I mean, I've seen some of you tell me that you saw it and you liked it, which is great because I did too, but I don't see a lot of chatter about it. JK Rowling is still sucking all the air out of the room on that one. So we'll see what, um, the damage that she has done and the previous Fantastic Beast movies have done to the brand. I think this one's going to be a long play and I'm including streaming on that. I hope, I suspect, but I largely hope because it's bad. It's the, the PR damage is bad. But I think the film could potentially really blow up when it hits HBO Max also in 45 days, just like the Batman. All right, let's head over to streaming, starting with Nielsen as usual for the second week of March. Get these numbers faster, Nielsen. This is silly. Although it's the only third party reliable source that we have. So Netflix, uh, you know, I think they're pretty reliable, although the studios, of course, say no. But the studios want to report their own numbers, which they're, you know, which is really suspect. All right, so anyway, Netflix still has a death grip on the top 10 of original shows. And Disney Plus, their biggest competitor, also Amazon, we'll talk about Amazon in a moment, but Disney Plus, as you can see, still does not have enough content to consistently compete with Netflix, which is why they're working so hard to get there. Because uh, again, they're not in the top 10 this week. Uh, App, we'll see what happens, uh, how Moon Knight fares. Um, Apple TV, it's criminal with all the good shows that they have there and that they're, they're not in here. They've only so far gotten Ted Lasso into the top 10. And then Hulu's popped in here a couple of times, but they're also struggling. It's ridiculous. Uh, but look at Amazon. Amazon shows that, it can, shows that it can be done with their own shows. They've got three shows now in the top 10 with Upload joining Mrs. Maisel and Reacher. Uh, with its season two debut. And this is good news for Greg Daniels, who, of course, just had a very solid hit with the second season of Space Force over on Netflix. Talk about diversifying your portfolio. Good for Daniels, who, of course, did the American version of The Office. Uh, and here's why Disney keeps sending Pixar movies to Disney+. Plus. They desperately need them. Because just as Encanto starts to go from supernova to regular shining star, in comes Turning Red with Enc Encanto-level numbers. Look at that. That's incredible. Although, what you see Bridgerton? Anyway, let's see if this has this. Let's see if this has the same hold as Encanto. Although it's tough when there are no musical numbers. I think that really helps the repeat, uh, you know, the rewatchability factor. The Adam Project, as you can see, also continu continues to be worth every penny for Netflix. And on that note, as for Netflix's own charts, just a week behind, here we see the Adam Project at number one here for the fourth week in a row, with new movie The Bubble unable to seat it with its debut. And True Crime continues to be, a hu to be huge for Netflix, with Crypto King picking up where the Tinder swindler left off. I love the Tinder swindler. Was Crypto, Crypto King good? Is it worth checking out? 
There's so much to watch. If you're a super follower, I will be telling, I tell you daily what you can, uh, what you can watch what's debuting. Uh, there's a lot. As for shows, uh, look at Bridgerton season two. That's rid- a super follower on Twitter, if you're wondering what that is. Uh, look at that, Bridgerton season two. Oh my God, look at those numbers. That's like eye-popping. That's incredible. Season one, right behind it. Shonda Rhimes is truly Netflix's Queen Midas. As Inventing Anna, also from her. Look at that, also still in the top 10. For the eighth week, that is incredible. Is It Cake continues to be a hit as well for Netflix. And Top Boy, some of you really wanted me to mention Top Boy, and I'm happy to do it. As you can see, it's posting some great numbers too for both of its seasons. And over on iTunes, the top um, the top 10 looks almost exactly the same as last week's, which is interesting. Although the first Sonic popped in as fans caught up for the sequel. As for this coming week, in theaters, Father Stu opens on Wednesday, Sony's play for the conservative uh, faith market. I appreciate some of you who tweeted me, remembering that I said that the studios were going to go after this market as it's proven to actually be considerable at the box office. And again, here's Sony's play. I think that's one of the reasons they cast Mel Gibson, as uh, I think the conservative faith market has is probably the group that's come around the most to forgiving Gibson for, for his own scandals. Uh, and Mark Wahlberg, what's he doing here? Well, he's trying to get... An, uh, awards nominations, which is interesting because I don't really know if a conservative faith movie would appeal to the awards voters. So I think that might be n- like a weird play. But anyway, Mark Wahlberg has been trying to get, speaking of people trying to get Oscars, he's been working for a very long time to get one. He put together The Fighter, but it was Christian Bale and Melissa Leo who walked away with the gold. Uh, and then also uh, on Friday, The Reckoning of J.K. Rowling is the main event as Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore goes wide across the globe. And we'll see just how bad the damage is to the Wizarding World brand. Uh, could it be another Morbius situation? Mm, that's crazy. All right. So anyway, uh, again, have you seen it so far and what did you think? And do you plan to see it this coming weekend? Uh, On streaming, Barack Obama's Nature Series hits Netflix on Wednesday. The Obamas, of course, have a big deal uh, with with Netflix. Michelle has had her own show. Uh, Their daughter is uh, in the writer's room on Atlanta. Uh, They're a very big presence in Hollywood. But this is very big because he's the host. He's the face of this show. It's a huge deal, read what what ex-presidents can do once they leave office. So keep an eye on this. This is interesting. Uh, Also, Disney Plus that day debuts six Ice Age shorts featuring uh, Scrap and baby scrat he's a he's a proud papa then on thursday the kardashians make the move to hulu where their will their huge audience follow them well the garcias debuts all episodes on hbo max that day and then on friday david e kelly who of course was very big on tv for a while and has been big very big on streaming particularly uh hbo and i think was a uh, little fires everywhere here is his, his as well he's having a resurgence so he's going to see what he can do on netflix he's going over to netflix Uh, And he also goes British with Anatomy of a Scandal. I like David E. Kelly. That could be pretty good. Apple TV, but wait till you hear this. Apple TV also drops all eight episodes of their star-studded Roar, which uh, takes a look at eight eight, eight very different women. And this is from the creators of Glow. Oh, I will definitely watch that. While Amazon kicks off their sci-fi western, Outer Range, which could be another maybe reacher for them. That'll be interesting. Uh, So that, speaking of the more conservative market, uh, really interesting to see them carve out a a really, you know, starting to be a very strong space in uh, Hollywood. Uh, So that's this week's movie math. What have you been watching? What do you plan to watch? And again, how do you think Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore, will do this coming weekend? That's going to be real interesting. All right, share those thoughts down below. Subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.